Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In our last video, we took a look at Stone Ground Paint Co's handmade watercolors in a swatch with me style format. Today will be a more review based video explaining how I feel about painting with these watercolors. Before going into the details about the brand, let me first give you a little overview of the painting process that you'll be watching. I painted this piece five months ago in October of 2022 as a donation for a fundraiser. After moving to Oregon, a viewer contacted me about a donation for an animal rescue that they work at that happened to be relatively local to my new home. For those of you who are newer to the channel and may not know as much about my life before I became a watercolor artist, my early professional life was entirely dedicated to my work as a zoo educator at an AZA accredited facility. I've explained this on the channel before, so I'll try to be as concise as possible, but come with me on a quick little tangent and I promise it will tie back around to this piece. Many animal lovers that I have come across are under the impression that all facilities that keep animals captive are equally terrible places that cage their animals for the entertainment or enjoyment of humans. Zoos did originate hundreds of years ago as terrible practices by people with a lot of money who wanted to show caged animals as status symbols. Obviously bad. However, today in the United States, we have a nonprofit organization called the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, or AZA. Many other accreditation organizations exist as well, both in the US and around the world, but my direct experience is with AZA, so that is what I'm going to speak to in this next little segment. AZA is dedicated to the advancement of conservation, education, and research, and requires that their facilities meet the highest standards of animal care and welfare. However, they must also provide a safe, fun, and educational environment for the communities that they serve as well. Accreditation is a rigorous process to ensure that animals are cared for using the highest standards possible, as well as ensuring that the facility itself exists with the purpose to educate the public on why these animals are living in zoos in the first place. However, I would also like to let everyone who questions the existence of accredited zoos know one thing. Nearly every person that I met during my 12 years in this field, collaborating with care staff and educators across the country, we all basically wanted the same thing. We wanted to provide the best lives possible for the animals in our care, but we also would have loved to put ourselves out of a job. We all wish that zoos didn't have to exist, but the world is not black and white and there are many many reasons why that is not possible in today's current state of the world. My little side tangent here is to frame the creation of this watercolor piece. In the realm of animal care, the words sanctuary and rescue are often misnomers. Not all sanctuaries and rescues exist for the betterment of the animals they care for. Many roadside zoos and places that offer photo opportunities, especially in tourist destinations, exist to make money at the cost of their animals' welfare and even public safety. All of this to say, when I heard from this viewer who worked at a facility with the word sanctuary in its name, it wasn't an automatic yes for me. I asked if they would be comfortable with me visiting the facility before agreeing to donate a piece to ensure that we were on the same page about animal husbandry and that the animals were being well taken care of. I was very happy to hear that the Keeper was in full support of this and was also happy to learn about more of the work that they do overall. Wildcat Ridge Sanctuary is a non-profit that is not open to the public. They are a last hope sanctuary that exists to provide a safe, lifelong home for captive-born wildcats in need. Because Wildcat Ridge is not open to the public, they are actually not eligible for the AZA accreditation that I mentioned earlier since that educational component is missing. However, as I mentioned before, there are other accreditation boards that serve different purposes for different types of facilities. Wildcat Ridge is accredited by the Big Cat Sanctuary Alliance, the Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries, and Tigers in America, and they are also highly rated by GuideStar and great nonprofits. 
All in all, after all this research and visiting the facility, I felt very comfortable moving forward in support of the work that they do. Wildcat Ridge has larger species like tigers, lions, and cheetahs, but they also have many smaller cats like servals and hybrids that end up there from hoarding situations or as surrendered pets. I hope that you could visualize my air quotes there, and I hope that I don't have to say this to my viewers, but as a disclaimer, please do not keep wild animals as pets. It ends badly for everyone involved, and Wildcat Rage is proof of that with so many animals ending up needing a home. This is Noni. Noni and his brother Nico were confiscated at 10 weeks old from an illegal breeder in 2002, severely emaciated and barely able to walk. They made their way to Wildcat Ridge and proceeded to spend the next 20 years under the care of their staff. As a point of reference, the life expectancy of a wild mountain lion is only 8 to 13 years. I had the honor of meeting Noni in the fall during my initial visit with Wildcat Ridge before painting his portrait. However, earlier this month, Noni's age finally caught up to him and his caretakers made the most difficult and most humane decision that anyone who works with animals ever has to make, and that was to help him pass on peacefully. Noni's caretakers described him as one of the bravest and most intelligent cougars they've ever had the privilege to know. If you would like to help the other cats at Wildcat Ridge Sanctuary live the best lives possible and have the means to do so, please consider donating to their organization. A link will be in the description below. You can also buy prints of this painting in my Etsy shop and 20% of each sale will also be donated to Wildcat Ridge. Now that you're acquainted with our beautiful, handsomest subject, let's talk about the paints that made this piece possible. As we talked about in the last video, Stoneground Paint Co. is a handmade watercolor company based in Canada. It was founded a little over five years ago by a father-daughter duo, Eric and Jenny. We talked about Stoneground's philosophy and their single pigment formulas. I also let you know that I've personally ordered from Stoneground several times since June of 2020, and that Jenny has also sent me even more colors to try out and share with all of you. Since we already covered those details in the last video, let's spend this video talking about what they're like to paint with. I have been using these paints for almost three years, and the fact that I haven't reviewed them until now, and that there aren't very many reviews on YouTube in general is criminal, honestly. <laughs> Uh, however, because I've been using them for so long, I do feel like I'm in a pretty solid position to share my opinions on them. Spoiler alert or TLDR, I love them, they're great. Stone ground paints lay down wonderfully, soften off beautifully, and layer fantastically. It's genuinely difficult to find points to critique them on in terms of their quality. Everyone will of course have their own preferences on what pigments they enjoy using, so color selection may require some fine tuning. For instance, the owner, Jenny, mentioned loving the Mayan Indigo Blue, however I generally find Mayan colors a little bit too difficult to rewet, and I prefer a stronger pigment load for the subjects that I paint and the techniques that I use. In this painting, you'll get to see a lot of my own personal favorites from this brand. As you saw earlier on that little glitch screen, I am pretty upset with myself for losing the footage of the middle stages of this painting. Not only did that footage show the process of building up form and value in this watercolor piece, it also highlighted some of my favorite colors from Stone Ground. Hopefully though, you can still see their beauty in the previous layers. Noni's fur was painted using brown ochre, titanium buff, titanium gray, and a few touches of raw sienna warm shade. You did see these colors in the very first wash, but I wish you had a chance to see more of them. They're just so satisfying to work with. These colors are all on the opaque side of watercolors. As we talked about for the last couple of months here on the channel, this opacity lends itself very well to soft, velvety fur textures and the hues of the brown ochre and titanium gray in particular are just really special colors that you don't find in every brand. As much as I love me some warm tones like Rossiana Warm Shade, most of Noni's fur needed cooler undertones, and these two were perfect for that. 
I've tried more stone ground colors than I have room for in my palette thanks to Jenny's generosity. However, that meant I also had to narrow things down overall. The colors that I ended up removing from my main palette were a lot of the Mayan colors and a few of the more transparent earth tones. This is simply because I'm in my opaque phase and I'm sorry if you're tired of hearing me say that, but if you love transparent colors, then none of the colors that I chose to remove would be poor choices for you. It's all a matter of preference. And again, if you would like to see all of the colors swatched out for comparison, you can check out my previous video. In terms of what other colors I used for this painting, you know, that's a really good question that I wish I had written down the answers to. Um, my memory is a bit fuzzy since this was five months ago and my palette has been used for other things since then, so I will try to make my best guess. I believe that the pink on the nose and the tongue was a combination of India Red, Quinacridone Magenta, and probably either Manganese Violet or Ultramarine Rose? Question mark. <laughs> um, I also vaguely remember mixing in some Cerulean Blue, but I'm not 100% positive on that. I am guessing that I painted his eyes using Mayan Green Deep and Florentine Green, as well as a bit of Naples Yellow Deep in the warmer areas. The darkest colors in this piece were mixed from Iron Oxide Black and Mayan Green Deep, the latter of which is the only Mayan color that I did choose to keep on the main palette. It makes an excellent dark tone. And the background, when we get to it, of course, is painted with Florentine Green, my beauty, my love. The white highlights that I painted were using white gouache, which is not part of my current stone ground collection. If you'd like to see what colors I'd recommend as must-sees from this brand overall, my final brand by brand blog post is now up on Patreon. In case you missed it and were wondering what happened to my brand by brand series, I finished the remaining brands on Patreon instead of YouTube. In addition to the original planned episodes, I also added Roman Schmall, and with this edition of Stoneground, that is going to be a wrap on the full series. I know that many people were looking forward to its return here on YouTube, but I have so many new video ideas that I am excited about and I really wanted to make room for them in my schedule. We do have lots of other exciting things happening over on Patreon as well, so if you're interested, definitely check it out. As a reminder, prints of this painting of Noni can be purchased in my shop and a portion of those sales will be donated back to Wildcat Ridge, or if you're able to make a direct contribution to their organization, that donation link is also in the description. Thank you so much to the staff at Wildcat Ridge for welcoming me to their facility and getting the chance to meet some of their amazing cats. Thank you to Jenny at Stone Ground for making these beautiful paints. And thank you to all of you for watching. Be sure to come on back for more watercolor paintings and educational content. And last but certainly not least, thank you to my amazing patrons who help keep this channel going with their support. You are all incredible and I couldn't do this job without you. Until next time, my friends, happy painting.